How do you write words to something that would describe a feeling that you can't explain? Iceland is one of those places that I can't exactly define. Because if you were to take a walk out into the middle of nowhere, sit down, unplug, and just listen. The tones, the sounds, a melodic ambience will start to emerge from the rocks and the waves within it. And then, it clicks. It's why people try to detach from the chaos of the world and seek out these places that are still untouched. It was about seven years ago when I first laid eyes on Iceland. In fact, it was right here where the sounds and music opened my mind. I found myself alone on this cliff listening to a song called Arabatur. And right at the crescendo, I dreamed I could fly out along these cliffs. It was just a fantasy, of course. A daydream I never thought could come true. Until it did. Every year since then, I'd be back to find something I hadn't seen before. Because once you start digging into Iceland, you'll realize that it'll take forever to explore. But it was around that first trip when I started to take interest in flight. So five years later, when the opportunity to fly here came up, it was a very, very good day. There's plenty of those blood-thumping, death-defying, paramotor, acrobatic gangsters out there, but this video isn't for that. It almost doesn't feel right to do that here. Every single flight was unreal. I was in disbelief that so much more existed beyond the roads, and here I am, on this swing under some fabric, wind in my face, looking down at my feet, dangling over these insane landscapes. To this day, I can't believe that this happened. Of course, it goes to say that it never would have without some motivated friends and enthusiasts from all walks of life. Byron, Shane, my boys from Team Fly Halo who helped keep me alive. Nick heard about this trip four days before we left and asked if there was any room to have him come along and take pictures. Well played, sir. Then there's Tucker may have heard of him, where he made his modeling debut here. Travis and Mate, the brave souls who flew through that little hole over there. And of course, Miro, the executive producer of this trip, paramotor designer and friend. It's one thing to go fly alone, but it's a whole new level of awesomeness if you get to share it with others.
I already consider myself one of the luckiest humans to be alive. Some reason, somehow, the luck just seemed to never end. We set out in August to go fly, and against all statistical odds, we certainly didn't expect this to happen. Dude, look how bright that is. Dude, what is happening? <coughs> this is how religions are started. <laughs> look at straight up, look at straight up. What? What? I'm gonna go make a tinfoil hat. Does everybody else want one? Dude, it looks like it's like reaching down through the freaking atmosphere towards us. The first time I came to Iceland and drove around the ring road, it amazed me how some of these breathtaking locations could feel so huge and at the same time, intimate. You could pull up to a waterfall and have the entire place to yourself. There was this one place out in the middle of a lava field where an old US Navy plane had wrecked and you had to sneak through a farmer's gate to get there, if you could find it at all. It didn't take long before masses of tour buses and parking lots popped up to accommodate these new trendy locations. So the ability to go where there are no roads, particularly no tour buses, blesses us with a humbling advantage. Over volcanoes, lava fields, and skies untouched, and on occasion, landing out to take it all in. feels like an alien planet. Are you kidding me? Like, I've never seen a place like this ever. This is... Oh, it feels like heaven, man. Like truly heaven. Woo! <laughs> this is awesome! Bring it full circle again. There's that feeling that can be so hard to express of what it's truly like. When Nick came back from one of his flights, he literally had tears in his eyes. I don't know if people can understand that, but for me, I'm glad Nick was there to show how I felt on the inside. That being a human and flying around the sky in a beautiful place like this, it's not natural. It's supernatural. It's something I think we all felt. So while the tour buses loaded with passengers from the west and the far east come to turn the Golden Circle into a theme park attraction, I'll continue to take to the skies. With any luck, I'll get to do it with my friends. <laughs> 